What's up, everybody? Welcome to Hot Makes right here on Hot Makes Across the Board. We're live on the Facebooks, the YouTubes, and probably on Twitch. I uh, hope everything is going good out there and, and everybody's doing good. Um, Just in time. We started on time today, pretty much. Pretty, pretty much. We'll say pretty much. Uh, a couple quick things. If you want to see any of the Hot Makes we show in the show, don't forget there's a link in the description below. Click that Google Doc. Find episode 100. And 26, whoa, that's a lot of episodes. 126 people, come on. Um, and, and you'll find all the cool stuff one minute late. I'm sorry, it's my fault. I was talking. Imagine that, I was talking too much. Um, but yeah, we have we have an awesome show today. Uh, the guest today is, man, it's, it's going to be so crazy to see some of the stuff and, and hear from him, some of the cool stuff that he gets to do. Uh, Walter Welsh also known as Walter Miss Prime from Welsh Creations. Uh, I just, I'm super pumped to talk to him. We were supposed to have him a few weeks ago, if you remember, and it, it got rescheduled, and it, tonight is that night. So uh, hold on tight because, um, I mean, if you like making in general, you're going to love this guy. So stick with us just for a minute, and I'll get him in. Uh, don't forget, there is a PayPal link if anyone wants to toss us a, a buck or two towards the uh, Oreo fund or, or whatever fund you want to call it today. Um, there's a PayPal link in the description. Um, what else? Also, we're, oh, we, we were, we went over 800 subs. I know earlier in the week or towards the end of last week, I think um, Geary threw out a, a tag that said, Hey, let's get us over 800. And we did it within very quick, like an hour or something. Right. It was very fast. Is that, is that right Geary? Are you with us? What's the question? <laughs> I was I saying yet. I was eating my nuts. <laughs> oh, Chris Perillo's with us. All right. Almonds, folks. Um, I said we, we hit that 800 pretty dang fast when you when you posted that for us. So uh, that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for, for doing that. We are super close to a thousand and we can start doing all the, the fun uh, super chats and all of that stuff. Uh, um, seriously, though. Yeah, we, we really appreciate it. Yeah. I'm just fixing. Um, there we go. I'm just fixing my Nightbot because anybody that's actually on the Edge of Tech channel is seeing like random stuff pop up. <laughs> I just remembered I had to turn it off. I did three live streams last week, so it was a little bit crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm super pumped. A couple quick things. I want to bring this up right away um, before I forget today. Um, and we'll try to remember to bring it up again. Let me just share my screen quickly. Boom. Um, Abby. There we go. That is not what was happening. What is happening there? Jeez, wrong screen, apparently. I'm just super, I'm, I'm excited. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, so Abby shot us over a, a quick message to let us know that tonight she'll be on the Loyal Moses show at 5 p.m pacific uh right after hot mix so jump in there have some fun we're gonna get that final push hopefully to 100 posts for the yellow ribbon 3d print project and we've been talking about that for the last couple weeks so um right after tonight's show jump over there if you want to on twitch see abby say hi and let's see if we can get her uh above i don't know if you guys saw but um i don't know if i don't know if abby saw it too i have to go back and look but um if you look on the Hot Mix channel on Facebook, I believe last week um, we had David Hewlett on, and I believe on the Hot Mix channel he posted his make. Geary, you can uh, attest to that, right? You me, are you asking me to go grab it? I'm, I'm going. I'm finding the post. I'm pretty sure it's right on the front page, right? Found it. Yep. Nailed it. Okay. Let me drag it over. I'm just going to drag it over. There we go. Tech banditry. I love that. Met the fabulous Abby Math on Hot Mix Podcasts. Thank you. Thank you. And uh and loved her. That was for him. Ding dong. <laughs> that there you go. Um, and loved her yellow ribbon 3D print campaign for mental health and suicide prevention. So I went Hollywood with it and broke out the sparkles. That and all my yellow filament have been eaten by minions. Um, so yeah, he he posted this and and tagged us and thank you so much, David. We appreciate that. I love the tech banditry <laughs> that you did, and there was a, a there was a whole bunch of fun uh, comments in here, and and he was going back and forth too. So 
Uh, thanks, David. We appreciate you jumping in there. And there you go. Um, is this the minions? What? I'm not sure what just what happened. I, what am I looking at? I don't. I don't know. Let's go see. Let's. Uh, oh, that's another post that he did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? What's up? Nice. Hey, I can tell you've been live streaming a lot lately because you're, you're really filling space here. I am. I am. I'm. Uh, I am. Just you know, getting all the stuff out of there. I want to make sure we're good. So, um, Abby, Matt, thank you so much for bringing us up on that project. We can't wait to see you on Loyal Moses's <laughs> show after hours. Um, Loyal Moses after dark uh yeah 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 you, did you oh you meet me you muted me okay no i didn't mute you i muted your computer <laughs> never never there you go if there's any questions at all <laughs> i yeah i muted you <laughs> thank you thank you i probably should i'm sitting next to a p1p uh the the um, bamboo lab p1p is like an arm's reach on the floor right here so i'm really surprised this mic is doing a very good job of of keeping that out um so yeah any other thing any anything else i need to bring up before we find walter and, and get him in that was that was for you unless i'm still muted no, you're not muted. Sorry, I was typing in the private chat to see where Walter was. I, <laughs> he was here I did too. Show, we promise. I, I look down and his screen is gray, which means he's probably there, but his camera's off. Hopefully, he can still hear us. Yeah. Um, or you know what happened? You, you probably backed out of the. Ah, uh, crap. He probably backed out of the um, tab. I oh, I did that is. before. Hey, he, hey, he's Where's, back. All right, you want to pull him in? Let's just do it. <laughs> Let's just do it. I think he's ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Walter Welch, also, also known, known as Walter, Walter Pride. Pride. How, are you doing? How you doing? Doing excellent. Oh. Hang on, we got, we got an echo. Go, go. That go. That was there we go. go. <laughs> Is everything working? <laughs> I think we, I have, think a, we have a, a good, a good echo, echo going, going on. on. Let me see. Let's see. I got my I got headset, my headset in. in. Are you? Are you? Uh, uh, what was what different was different than you, than you did earlier? earlier? A am I? Can you not hear me? We can hear we you. We can hear you. Um, um, but I think but we're, I think echoing, we're back. echoing back. Oh, I haven't done anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same. It's all the same. Um, we can, um, hear, we can hear yourself. Right. Right. He's on his. You're on, his, you're on, a, you're phone, on a phone, right? right? I am on a phone. Yeah. Is that is that a bad thing? Um, um, no. Nope. You may, you may just need to turn this down a little. Yeah, okay. Let's yeah. yeah. Were you on the phone earlier before the show? Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Does it work better when I have headphones in or something? Yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably, yeah. Okay. I'll I'll, uh, I'll snag some headphones. Sorry, sorry about that. Do it. No, no. Don't be sorry. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. No. Everything. You'll be back. So we do an audio check before the show, and everything was fine. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. I'm super pumped. Either way, I'm always super pumped. I might have to pull out the Oreo rescue so that was, kit. Uh, or the, that was Walter Walsh, everybody. Thank you for joining. This is the end of the show. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, we, need to, uh, we need to do a cameo of my, uh, from Pooch at some point where we bring him on as a quote-unquote guest, but he shows up for like two seconds, has technical issues, and then never shows up again. Yeah, he's on the top of a mountain or something. Uh, that would be funny. We, uh, You remember that when we were we were streaming and he had to drive? to the top of the the hill or mountain or whatever it was by his house to get us back whoa gary gary just what? made the guest mad I? Is that what <laughs> bad, i'm sorry bad gary all right let's see walter we got you back is that better possibly oh, maybe better. okay awesome. good oh uh, well welcome to the show <laughs> we've had a crazy crazy <laughs> few minutes but that's okay um ladies and gentlemen this is walter welsh uh, you know him as Waltimus Prime, probably. I mean, he's everywhere. But before we go any further, before we dive into everything, can you let everybody know, like, from you, who you are, what you do, that kind of thing, and then we'll we'll jump right in. Cool, sounds good. Uh, my name is Walter Welsh. I'm Waltimus Prime on Instagram. 
Uh, I was on that show Face Off on Sci-Fi Channel. I'm a makeup artist for film and television. Also do a lot of stuff for cosplayers and collectors. And yeah, I'm just an overall maker. I do all kinds of stuff. Awesome. Um, I I love that you you're like yeah I was on that show Face Off. Um, you know that little one, <laughs> that that little show. A little show. Uh, <laughs> so I was on twice. We we won't bury the lead. I was gonna say I think you were on twice, and if I and if I remember right, um, you were a finalist two times, correct? Two times. Two time finalist. So you were yeah. in the final episode twice. Yep, I'm the uh, two time loser. <laughs> I mean, most of us would probably say, <laughs> yeah, but most of us would probably say you're like a two time winner because, like, most of us will never get there. So, I mean, there's that. Thank you. I, um, no, we're, we're still pumped. So, so if anybody have not seen that show, can you kind of like describe what you have to do? If, uh, if yeah, you're like it's... giving your elevator pitch about what it is, but no one, no one heard about it before. Okay, it's a super fun competition reality uh, TV show, kind of like the Ink Masters and the food, the cooking ones. There's sure. like, you know, a hundred different variations on different channels. But this one was a competition reality series where a bunch of different artists face off and competed against each other and with each other um, doing special effects makeup for given challenges uh, to try to emulate how they did it in the movies behind the scenes, but in a reality competition way. It was pretty fun. It was on Sci-Fi Channel. Um, I, I called it the world's best boot camp. Uh, I had a ton of fun. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. I, I bet it's I bet it's a lot of fun to get to know the people you're competing with, and you know, like bounce ideas. You probably learned a bunch from there too. I imagine. Oh yeah, I learned so much, and uh, I kind of. I mean, I feel disrespectful to relate it to the military, but it kind of feels similar, as in. Um, they took a group of us uh, each season. I think there was 15 of us and right. were fully sequestered. And if you make it throughout the entire competition, you're there three and a half months. So you're Whoa. fully sequestered for three Whoa. and a half months. They take your cell phone. You're not allowed books or games or, or anything. No TV, no movies, no nothing for three and a half months. So basically uh, you're stuck with these people. And the only way to entertain yourself is with these people. So we all become wow. very close and, uh, kind of developed a bond within each other because we went through this crazy experience together but i mean like three and a half months you get you don't get your phone yeah no phone though we got one what? phone call if you became a finalist um so if you become a finalist three <sighs> a little over three months into it um we were kind of granted one phone call home wow why, so why, so that why that disconnect you so much what's the purpose of that yeah uh, it, it, we never thought Drama. it made too Drama. much sense, but it was so that, uh, we were fully focused on the challenges, fully focused on, uh, the show, but also we, uh, no books, no TV, no movies, no form of entertainment like that. So that we're not inspired or, um, driven to take ideas from certain IP and put that certain that IP sense. on sci-fi channel where they don't but own. Like, but what about your family? I mean, like, say I have a, a wife and kids back home, like zero. You're cut off for three and a half months. Completely cut off. Just, just, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing like when you sign up, it's just kind of like given you're expected to like that's what you sign up for. Oh, yeah. It's Man. all in the contract system. I mean, they, they tell you ahead of time, be prepared. You're fully sequestered. You won't be able to talk to your family or anything. Wow. Um, but, you know, it kind of goes by pretty quickly. And in a world where we're all glued to our phones, uh, it was actually kind of nice. Uh, sometimes <laughs> I think about it all the time how much I, I miss not having my phone. Um, and, I mean, I grew up, and I'm sure you guys did too, grew up in a generation where we didn't have our phones. So uh, it's just sometimes I kind of miss it. And, and having that experience was kind of cool because <laughs> you, you're, you're driven to, especially when you're making stuff, you, you want it to be perfect. You want it to be as good and as accurate as humanly possible, especially everybody who does props right. and things like that. You want it to be accurate to the game or the movie or whatever it is that you're making. So you're constantly checking your phone or you're constantly pulling up uh, reference uh, yeah. material. Whereas yeah. uh, when you're just fully creative and, and you, ha you don't have that ability to, to check the internet, um, it kind of pulls <laughs> something out of you that you didn't know you had yeah. creatively. 
Yeah, I could see that. And it's, oh man, I never even thought about how hard that might be. It's got to create that tension and the drama, too, that they're looking for. Because there's definitely their characters. I say characters. The people on the show, which are characters in themselves sometimes, right? There's um, some personalities, for sure. That, that like, fall back on that. Like, I haven't seen my family. You see that in a lot of these shows. But you feel like, oh, they've talked to them, though. I didn't realize that you're fully sequestered. Um Wow, that, yeah, for, that's for whatever crazy. reason that never gets brought up. It never gets talked about when you're as a viewer watching. Because I was a fan yeah. long before I was on the show, right. and I had no idea that they get fully sequestered. And especially in my line of work, where we're doing prosthetics and special <laughs> right. effects and, and makeup stuff, you constantly are double checking references, and you know you want things to be as realistic as yeah. possible. So if you're doing like a cat creature, you're you're researching all these pictures of cats and snouts and teeth and, and stuff like that so to not have that it makes you more yeah. creative but also like there's never there's never too many uh, good makeups on the show where you're like whoa <laughs> that could definitely be on a movie that if you see them up close you'll see the mini flaws yeah well i'm sure um you're really pulling that out of your experience then because oh, yeah. you know you're, you're doing stuff and and christoph kind of like jumped ahead a little bit but he's he, you know he did master chief as well he's the twerking master chief though we oh nice is a twerking master chief now um you know oh, from, oh the, the he, yeah 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 he <laughs> twerked the stage thing i i, I love um, uh christopher he's he's awesome with yeah. sinister props yeah sinister props and, and so he's like man you got it you got to contact walter um let me hit him up i'm gonna tell him you're contacting me. like you got to get him on the show and he just he just already threw it out there that you have uh the nicest uh, what what was his actual words? He has the uh, best Master Chief, uh, best, best looking Master ma- Chief in existence. Yeah. In existence, oh, in well, existence. I greatly um, appreciate that. His and, is pretty pretty darn cool as well. And and that's and that's this one here, right? Um, yep. Betrayal. Blow this up, but <laughs> betrayal. <laughs> so, um, is this? I got to start with this because we're a heavily three D printed oriented. Are is this three D printed? No, it's uh, there's a couple of little elements that are 3D printed, but it's all I'm mostly a foam fabricator, so okay. Okay. Um, it's mostly all foam fabbed. Got it. So the, uh, uh, the the screw posts and everything on that looked like it was a like you were modifying a helmet, like an existing helmet. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, the helmet is the uh, the there Jazz you. Wears collectible helmet. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it keeps saying I'm getting disconnected. Uh, yeah, it was the Jazz yeah. Wears helmet. You can buy it from Best Buy or from GameStop, and uh, the way it comes just doesn't look very good. So I uh, I took it all apart, repainted it, and then um, actually Christopher he, he he his helmet the Cortana chip lights up in the back, and I thought that was so cool. So I borrowed his idea and uh, I 3D printed the little chip holder. Nice. And uh, plug that in there, and then uh, resin printed the the chip itself, and then made it light up. So nice. I, I altered it and, and made it look a lot better. And then uh, yeah, so that part of the suit is uh, I mean it's you know with the jazz wears helmet, and then the belt is three D printed, um, and that's about that's the only parts that are three D printed. A couple of, like the buckles, the detail stuff, the buckles are three D printed. Sure, uh, a couple of greebles on the back are three D printed. Just little stuff here and there, but the foam is just so much more comfortable. I, I, I bet. nothing worse than wearing a full three D printed armor, and the little corners <laughs> are stabbing you, They're and it's way heavier. In. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of people with their um, well, you see it in this picture with their Iron Man suits say that too. And oh, um, and those guys can barely move. Like, uh, <laughs> they look fantastic, but they look very much RoboCop. And what's going on here? Like, they're uh, barely moving. To, uh, you gotta talk to Timo Sullivan about what it's like to wear a three PO costume. Yeah, C three PO costume. <laughs> yeah, or even uh, Frank uh, Peter Weller in uh, RoboCop. They had to there drill and screw most of his parts in. Uh, I went to uh, I went crazy. to a celebration with Timo Sullivan and was hanging out with him while he was getting suited up, and it took him about forty five minutes to an hour to get in suit, and he could only survive it for about thirty minutes before he had to get back out. Oh wow. man, dedication. Yeah, that is dedication. When you do, you do a lot of other stuff. So, um, you're you said you're a makeup artist for um, TV and, and movie, right? Yep. Um, you do stuff like this, which is your Krampus, right? Um, yeah, I make latex masks. Nice. 
latex and masks, it, silicone masks, prosthetics. So props. is this is this a mask or is this yeah that's a, that's a mask somebody's wearing. That's an actual mask because I see it. It says you could you can get on Etsy only, uh, and you made some for Etsy. Um, but I thought that was just like a you know basically a mold like you know a molded you, you prop you sit there. That's an actual mask. That's an actual mask. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the um, one the one in the video is uh, it's my personal like it's a mask that I foam filled and okay. then put uh, prosthetic eyes in it. So that particular one is not wearable. It's filled with foam, but. Uh, you know, it the mold is a latex mask. Sure, that is awesome. <laughs> Christoph says uh, his suit isn't stabby, but it's very heavy. Um, he has some cool stuff about his suit to where he can move and uh, squat and sit down and all these things that most of these suits <laughs> can't do. So, like he he's got little elastic parts to where like the the belt moves with his movements, and it, he's really thought about certain things that a lot of us didn't think about. So. <laughs> big props to him i've learned a bunch just from him and his movements that's awesome and so uh i i you know i don't know if i could do it i think you guys are bigger people than me because i'd be in that thing like dying pouring sweat and i'm sure everybody's doing that right you're just like dying in that thing i guess but when you're in the moment you're in i the moment, i right? did three hours at san diego comic-con and uh i thought i was gonna die but uh <laughs> i ran into him uh sinister props christopher I ran into him earlier, and he was in the suit. And then later that night at a club, he's still in the suit. He was in yeah. the suit for like 14 hours. <laughs> so That's... it takes, I mean, I can't do that. I, I, I think I've, I've got a good four. I think I did uh, I did the suit uh, the beginning of October. I wore it for five hours, and that was the most I had ever been in it. That is uh, that's That's crazy. So um so moral of the story if you're gonna make a suit be prepared to suffer in it uh <laughs> so i think they're all they're all i mean it's fun to be in it and uh yeah. everybody loves it but it's definitely not comfortable even the best ones aren't exactly comfortable i mean some more comfy than others but for the most part i mean we're all gonna be sweating and things are gonna get uncomfortable you get this weird pain in between your shoulder blades uh, you, you know little uncomfortabilities <laughs> And then you realize it's the first day of a three day con. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, ne I, next, I, next, uh, San Diego. I, I'm just, I, I bring friends to wear the stuff and then I pass out business cards and stuff. Uh, I, I won't be wearing it again. That was too difficult for me. That's, that's a good idea. I like that idea. Um, so you said you do, you do like the masks. So the masks, um, do you create like a, a mold and then you silicone pour them like you said, or, is that kind of what you do? Um, yeah. How do you I, create your masks? I hand sculpt everything with either okay. water-based clay or oil-based clay, and it all gets molded and then cast in either latex or silicone. And awesome. uh, from there, you get a latex copy that you paint, trim, clean up, paint it, and it's ready to go. And, and I mean, you've done a ton of these things. Uh, I'm just looking through, um, <laughs> just looking through your Instagram, really. And it looks like, a lot of these things are masks. Wait, you did the turtles? Uh, I don't. I, my Wait, my screen this? just shows a loading thing, so I never know what you're looking oh, at. I'm but... sorry. I'm sorry. So uh, you got to show you you make the shell for the turtles. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, space prosthetics and cowl uh, and some armor pieces. It looks like I, I have a uh, a couple of people that come back to me every year for Halloween, and and they uh, they always have crazy ideas for their family um for the holidays and one year they wanted to be the turtles so uh they oh, outsourced man. the masks i'm not sure who did the masks sure. but uh i did the shells um a couple of the little extra stuff and i did okay. uh the splinter uh mask and all the shredder armor nice that that is a uh, dedication as a family uh <laughs> oh yeah they, they are all about halloween and they um they put on this big thing for their community and uh the whole community and people from miles away come up and it's like a theme park line and in, in the Ooh. back of their house mostly to take pictures really? with uh, the owners but That's um awesome. they get candy and all kinds of stuff it's really cool <laughs> so uh what i'm looking at now is you said super fun makeup i gotta do for at oh i see one. this one yeah i did uh, okay. uh it's like a minotaur that was somebody else's for their halloween sure 
Um, so when you did this, you start with like a base layer. Did you? Is this a silicone mask first? That is actually a foam latex prosthetic that uh, it was purchased from. Uh, there we go. I think it's in the caption. I don't remember. Uh, okay. Oh, in, infected FX. Infected FX. Uh, yeah. They. It's a piece that they made, and the the person, the model who was wearing it, they purchased it, and they just needed somebody to apply it and paint it, and you know, put it all together. So. Um, wow. Which is kind of how it happens in the movies. If uh, if anyone's in, uh, curious, most yeah. of the artists who win the Oscars and stuff, typically, sometimes they are, but typically they have nothing to do with the creation of the prosthetic. Um, sometimes they most certainly are. Uh, like Joe Harlow, he's very uh, in, uh, involved in the process of making the the pieces, and Bill Corso, the you know Rick Baker, those greats. They're definitely involved in the making of the pieces, but. For the most part, um, a piece gets made at a lab, uh, okay. designed from designers, and then uh, it gets the designs get approved, sent to the lab. That's then uh, a live cast is taken of the actor, and then from okay. there they build the prosthetic or the muscle suit or the creature suit or whatever it is. They build it on the sure. live cast of the actor or model, and then it gets made in the lab, pre-painted in the lab, and shipped to set, usually Atlanta or Vancouver or Toronto. Wow, okay. um, and then from there, there's some artists who just kind of fine tune detail and put it all together. And that, and that's, is that what you do? Uh, I kind of do both. So sometimes okay. I'm the fine tuner and then, I, I mean, I prefer to be the lab stuff. I really do like <laughs> you, being in the lab sure. and creating it from head to toe. But, uh, recently I've been doing a lot more of the fine tune on set stuff, um, which is, is great too. Pays a lot more, um, and uh, typically that's when people say, what have you been up to and what are you doing? They want to hear yeah. what movies and what shows you've been on. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in the lab, it's like, uh, yeah, I worked on this or that. And and yeah. then you say, but I, so you were in Toronto. No, I was never in Toronto. I just did it in Burbank <laughs> or, you know, wherever nice. it is that you were. So a uh, latex mask comes, um, the ac actor, actress, whoever it is, is sitting there. You have this thing in front of you. What is the process of like taking that? You just put it on them. I mean, that can't it can't be that easy, right? Um, yeah. Uh, so there's the there's latex masks which are just pull over. You know, Halloween you can buy at sure. Spirit. Um, mine are you know a lot better quality than you can buy at the Halloween store. But then right. there's foam latex, which is a, a type of prosthetic, and that's the type of prosthetic. It was used a lot more in the 80s and 90s um okay nowadays they kind of switched over to mostly silicone stuff anytime sure. it's foam latex today it's usually just to uh prevent weight because silicone weighs a lot and foam latex is like a spongy material so got it it's uh soft flexible and really lightweight um but when i do it uh, i have an oven and so i do a lot of foam latex personally so um you get a model or an actress and uh you prep their skin to uh kind of make sure it doesn't have any oils or lotion or any of that so you wipe all that down prep the skin and uh most of the time you got to bald cap the person just to protect their hair and oh, give no. you give you a lot more surface <laughs> area to glue things to oh no <laughs> uh, it's uh so it's not good. that it's not that bad actually um but you you bald cap a person put a bald cap on and then from there, you just kind of slowly glue the appliance uh, to the face, around the eyebrows, um, stuff like that. And then at the end of the day, they take it off and you have to do it again and again and again until the to the show, movie, whatever it is, is over. Yeah. If, if you're talking 30 days, it's a 30 day wow. shoot. Um, that's 30 days on and off, on and off, on and off. So you oh, have wow. to like be real. Uh, and, and it's a new piece every day. So. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. You can't reuse a lot of the pieces you can't reuse. So, um, you, when you take it off, you destroy it basically. Uh, Whoa. and, uh, you just real careful with their skin cause they have to come back and do it tomorrow. So, um, usually it's kind of like a spa treatment. You, you're real slow, subtle, you use removers, um, you, you wow. kind of slightly peel at it and massage with removers to take the huh. piece off. And then you kind of, we, we put hot towels on their face and, uh, wow. put a, uh, a cream of, cold cream on their face afterwards just really try to take care of the model or actress um once you take everything off so that they can come back and do it the next day that is crazy so um man i so you're saying like a 30-day shoot say you say you get hired you're you're working with yourself or whatever company you work with right you go down 
it's a 30 day shoot. So you are, are you just doing it in the morning and doing it when they're done shooting? Or do you have to be there like during the, the shooting and stuff that way, if something happens, you can fix it or how does that work? Yeah. Uh, makeup artist is longer is on set longer than anybody. So uh, usually it's like a 4 a.m. call time. You're there uh, yeah. early. You're probably there probably about an hour before the actor or model shows up just so that you can get all your stuff set up and ready sure. to go. Um, and then it could be a three hour application. So three hours of makeup application. And wow. then they're going to shoot for anywhere from six to eight hours. And you have to be there for the whole entire thing just in case something happens. You're kind of just babysitting. Most of the time you're sitting around doing nothing. And then at the not end. Not sequestered, right? Not no. sequestered. <laughs> uh, at the end, you have to remove everything. So um, we're there before wow. people are putting things up. Uh, and we're there after everything's taken down. So um, yeah. it's really long, long set days for makeup artists. But uh, like you said, it pays well because you got to be there the whole time, I, I assume. Yeah, you got to be there the whole time. Lots of overtime. That's awesome. Well, um, before I before I show something, we got a couple questions. Um, Christoph, uh, Sinister Pop says your your chief parts are foam latex, right? Yes. Okay. Nice. And uh, Offset Maker oh, Lab oh, my, says... Oh, my soft part. He says your chief soft part. So he's talking about parts, all yeah. my... Uh, my undersuit stuff I, i'm one of the few master chiefs out there and i only toot my own horn here because uh, i i see uh, so many master chiefs and none of them have uh the undersuit parts so i'm one uh, of the few master chiefs that i hand sculpted all the inner between stuff the oh. undersuit like the ab the uh you can see in between the bicep area this area here sure. and the neck i've got a neck seal and shoulder parts and all that stuff. And that was all hand sculpted and then cast nice. in latex. Wow. So it, it's more comfortable than that way, right? It, it's the latex is more comfortable than 3d printed or the foam <laughs> stuff, but it's still like, uh, is it very hot? Uh, it, yeah. it, oh, it I doesn't, bet. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't allow any heat to release or anything. So it kind of, <laughs> I, I, that's why I don't build. I know a lot of people when they contact me and they want an undersuit, they want me to make them an entire undersuit. Sure. And I try to avoid, I try to tell them to avoid that at all costs because it would be so much hotter. You would, uh, you'd overheat yeah. and, and there's just nowhere for your sweat to release and there's nowhere right. for your body to cool off. Even in the big foam armor, um, there's still air and space in between your body and, sure. uh, the, the, the piece to where you can breathe. And there's a little bit of, uh, excess heat release. Um, whereas if I were to put you in a full latex suit, uh, you have nowhere to breathe. There's nowhere for <laughs> you to uh, kind of cool yourself off. So um, I try to just do the parts where you can see it through the armor. And then yeah. the parts that you can't see it, uh, that's where you release your heat and you it's uh, more comfortable nice. for you. So that's, that's a good idea. I can imagine, like, I mean, it basically like sticking yourself in a sauna. 100%. Uh, <laughs> or oh, uh, latex, you know, those, those uh, plastic or la those, uh, what are the, the pleather pants? You know, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, um, if you've ever seen somebody take, uh, like, there's like videos of uh, cosplayers. They'll take their yeah. latex glove off, and it's just drip sweat. That's yeah. exactly what it would be like. It's it's uh, jeez, oh, it's everywhere, super hot and gross, everywhere, everywhere. Um, Offset Maker Lab, our three D printed. Uh, let's see, oops, our three D printed body or head molds becoming more common for creature. Uh, wow, creator actors, creature actors. Wow. Yes. If I could yeah. talk. That'd be great. I, I get I get the question. It's uh so big studios, they have the you know the ten thousand dollar scanners and whatnot. So uh traditional live casting was always done with the same way when you go to the dentist and you take uh impressions of your teeth. That's mm -hmm. that's how traditional live casting was done with your face, your head, your body, everything. We wow. do the same thing with the uh it's usually silicone, sometimes it's uh alginate the teeth when you do your teeth it's an alginate form um <clears throat> that's how traditional live casting was done but today with technology scanning printing stuff like that uh most of the big studios do scanned uh live cast so you'll come in they do a lot of the same things still bald cap you just so that you can get all the details of your head sure um and they'll just take a scan and then from there they'll mold that scanned piece and uh you know, oh. make it in uh, resin or uh, epoxy, different sure. materials to make it strong, but also lightweight. Um, and then now a lot of molds, 
is uh, done by matrix molding. Okay. Um, matrix molding is basically when you uh, you create the shell, the the mother mold, um, and you key it on the inside, uh, so right. that when you fill in the mother mold with your silicone, it just forms and perfectly molds whatever you're molding, but also fills in the keys into the mother mold. Um, that's probably a terrible way of describing a matrix mold, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> What's really common nowadays is you can scan whatever it is that you're about to mold. Um, so if you're molding or a face or something, you can scan it, upload it into Blender or something. And then uh, from Blender, you can sculpt how thick you want your, your uh, silicone to be. And you uh -huh. basically put a layer over your scanned object and key it and then uh, reverse imprint it in a Blender or in one of the... Uh, softwares to to cut it and you can then basically create your uh imprint of your mother mold and then print the mother mold so you'd have a printed oh. mother mold and then you fill in the jacket with uh silicone and that's sure. super popular i don't know how to do that i'm not that advanced <laughs> but i see a lot of people doing their molds like that and it, i cool. think it's so beautiful it's um it takes i think it's way cheaper because uh, sure. you, you blow through so many materials when you're uh, making those mother molds and it gets pretty pricey versus just printing the jacket in a couple of different pieces. Right. Um, that's It's definitely the way the future is looking to do all mold making. And you're saying you use Blender. So, I mean, that's something that a lot of people would be familiar with here. Um, so that that's pretty cool. That Yeah, you yeah I think a lot of them together. either will use Blender, or AutoCAD, or Fusion sure. 360. Um, nice. All the things that, that's that people pretty are cool. familiar with. Well, and I'm looking at, um, so I have your Etsy up, and yeah. I wanted to look at a couple. I mean, you have a few things on here currently, and one of the cool things is the the, the Skeletor, uh, there we go, Red Skull Anatomy Ghost Rider Black Mask. There you go. Um, yeah, so, you got to throw in those those names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All, you got to throw them all in there, right? Um, but what's cool is you have a, a couple different styles. You have with a with a hood, the skull only, and the skull with a neck. And if you wanted to do, I'm, I'm guessing the hood comes. Does that come with a neck and the hood? Yeah, it all comes yeah. just like that. Just like this, right? Yeah. I mean, this is killer. Two hundred fifty bucks, and you that is a, a basically a mold, right, of what you did, and then you painted that. Yeah. You just you ca I can cast them up and then paint them and then I hand sew the the hoods onto them. And you hand sew the hoods right on them. Yep. Um, and then you know if you just wanted the the skull or something, you get something like that, and that's with the neck too, right? Yep. And, and it's this just is kind of however you want it painted is how I paint it. Really? Yeah. And you just work with the person. So like, hey, I want a skull with a neck. That's two hundred bucks. How do you want it painted? And exactly. Then you just, wow. Um, so, and then when I get this, uh, it, is it only one size? So like what happens? I get this thing and it just like, thunk, doesn't go on. Yeah. It, it is one size, but it's cut up the back. So up the uh, back to about like right below the top of the head. Um, so if it, if like you, I have a extra, extra large head. So sure. when I have to wear these things, I have to have that seam so that it's kind of open in the back so that my big fat head can fit in it. So <laughs> gotcha. yeah. That's like right here. It Let's fits see. most. Yeah, That's that cool. one you don't see it because I took the picture before I cut it. But yeah, you, so you yeah. cut it up like right up in here. Yep, all the way to where the cracks meet at the top. Yep. Okay. Wow. And then that way you can put it on and. And that's that's really cool. Um, and it, you know you have a bunch of different uh, stuff in here, which is really cool because uh, you know if you're looking for an equalizer, <laughs> there you go, the frog lizard. There you go. I know somebody that needs the, the hands too, right? Yeah. Um, but that's that's awesome that you do that, and and the prices are like very very reasonable. I mean, it, you see stuff out there where it's not even a mask, and it's you know just a mold <laughs> painted, and it's uh, you know a thousand dollars or whatever. It, and I think that's pretty cool that you're doing like we we could reach out and get a, a basically a custom mask essentially from you. Totally, totally. Uh, good. Wow, that that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so I, check I, it out I try to Etsy. keep. Yeah, I appreciate that. Welsh Creations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I try to keep everything, you know, reasonably priced. Um, I, I see a lot of people just like price gouge like crazy. Um, I just feel weird doing it. So I, I try to whatever I, I'm obviously I want to make profit. But at the same time, sure. I don't think some things are worth 
you know, if it's a latex mask, it's hard to charge you $800 for that because I know how much it costs to make. So <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, we do have a question. How would Walter recommend breaking into the special effects industry today, especially if you don't want to move to LA? <laughs> uh, it, I, I get that. Cause I did the, I moved to LA and it Atlanta. Was, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Atlanta is like yeah. one of the largest hubs for right. uh, makeup and movies. movies. A lot yeah. of movies get shot in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to be in LA. There's a huge movie, uh, presence in Texas, Austin, Dallas area. Uh, there's a huge movie presence on the East coast in Jersey and New York and, and stuff up there. And then of course, huge presence in Georgia down in Atlanta. Sure. Um, but if you wanted to break in, uh, what I always recommend people is the Stan Winston school of character arts is an online school that you can subscribe to. I think, Right now it's forty percent off. They don't pay me, oh, wow. but they should. But forty percent off, you can because <laughs> I refer them all the time. Forty uh, percent off on their subscriptions, which I think puts you at like thirty bucks a month, and uh, you get unlimited views of their classes. And some of the classes Ooh. are taught by Oscar winners. You, you can watch uh, an Oscar winner uh, apply a makeup. Bill Corso shows how he applies a burn makeup, just like he did on uh, Deadpool. Or uh, some, you know, one of the world's best sculptors painting or sculpting or painting their own mask and showing you how step by step how they sculpted and then molded and then cast and then painted a mask. So um, it, it's it's honestly it's worth every penny. It's super cool. You get to learn from the best in the industry. Um, like there, you can see how to make prosthetic eyes, yeah. how to make blood gags, how to mold, how to mold a two a uh, 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 sorry, a three quarters mask or a sure. full around the head mask. Um, they show how to do animatronics, how to program. Right. I mean, anything awesome. you can think of, uh, they Up have a making. video or a yeah. class for. And uh, it's fascinating. I've been a subscriber forever. I've learned so much from them. Um, I couldn't recommend it anymore. That is super cool. And, and, and like you said, it looks like it's 40% off and you can jump in and, and get it. Um, there you go for, so for a year, it's 215 bucks for the whole year. If you wanted to do it that way and you get unlimited everything, um, and, and you can pretty much go in and learn. So, so say 100%. you're, uh, so say you're, you know, you take this, you go in, you're, you're practicing, you're doing your thing, you're learning. Where do you start after that? Like obviously posting everything on Instagram because everybody's on Instagram with that kind of stuff. It looks like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it feels and, and like I, I, you have to have some type of presence on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah, um, sure. There's so many groups on Facebook that you can uh, post to and kind of get your name out there and uh, just showcase your work. But sure. a huge place where you can meet people network and uh, pass out business cards and stuff are these conventions. So yeah. um, monster Palooza is, is probably the biggest makeup convention there is. It's Ooh, uh, geez. it's in Burbank or I think there's one in Burbank and one in Pasadena every year. The okay. son of Monster Palooza and Monster Palooza. I think Monster Palooza is in June, June 1st and 2nd. Ooh. And then son of Monster Palooza is usually the last week of September or early October. Um, they're both great conventions. You get to see uh, a lot of stuff from the big studios uh, that make everything. Like Ironhead Studios is usually there and they make all the superhero suits like Nice. Uh, the batman suit and sure. aquaman suit stuff like that um and That's then there's cool. a lot of cool stuff on display from movie memorabilia to history of makeup stuff like that but you could be walking around this convention and bump into rick baker or, you know rick, and if, for those of you that don't know who that is yeah. he's one of the greatest uh makeup artists of all time um he's kind of like cool. the godfather of makeup he's retired but uh, he did American Werewolf in London and all the Men in Black stuff and uh, nice. just a lot of great things over the years. And uh, like you could be walking around and bump into him and talk to him or <laughs> Tom Savini will be there and That's you can cool. be walking around and bump into him. Like it's just it's a great place to network and meet people and kind of pass your business cards out or ask, you know, what can you do? It's a great place to get advice, stuff like that. Right. One, I imagine um, networking, getting to knowing people, getting your stuff out there, the views and stuff. I'm, I'm sure um, Instagram, that kind of thing. When you you become popular, you get more views. When you get more followers, stuff like that. And then you know that gets your foot in the door somewhere. You know, it once could, you, once you're sure. 
it could right and once your foot's in the door you know then it's just up to you to either, you know kind of push your way in right <laughs> yeah absolutely or if you're if you're in any of those key locations california uh dallas georgia sure. jersey one of those key locations you can go and try to apply at uh, one of the various shops um where they make the stuff basically and you can like how i started out i started out as a uh just a That's lab cool. tech basically um and in the beginning i did nothing but sweep floors and clean molds sure. and you know basic stuff but then i became a shop runner um and as a runner you basically are just going around to all the different uh warehouses and supply stores and you're getting all the supplies and going back and forth and stuff like that um, but you work your way up until you're a silicone tech and then you're running That's all cool. the silicone for the prosthetics and appliances, um, painting, you could be a painter, you could be a sculptor, you know, whatever sure. it is that you, you kind of have your passion your desire, is. Yeah. whatever your passion is. And yeah. that is a great way into the industry too, is if you can, if you're in one of those key locations or you want to move to one of those key locations and That's you cool. kind of work your way in through the lab side. And once you're in the lab side, Every day you meet people who are makeup artists who are working on whatever film, television nice. thing that's going on. So you could always be like, hey, can I assist you for free or can I assist you? Or somebody will be like, hey, you're paying 18 bucks an hour for an assist. Nice. You'll be on set for eight hours, whatever. Um, sure. That's cool. It works like that. And that's a good avenue for you. And that's well. a good way to get, you know, get your in. And and um, like I, oh, a few years ago now, I was in Atlanta for for some other stuff and I we, we literally were down there to work for three hours, but I was there for five days, but they, you know, they paid me, um, they paid me actually, I think I was there from Thursday night and we left Monday morning or Sunday night, Monday morning, whatever that days is. But, but I worked for three hours. They paid for the whole trip and all that stuff. And, um, I, I say worked, I set up and tore down and that I didn't really count that in work, but <laughs> it was probably like nine hours of total work for all the time. But in the off time, we got to go around to all the studio tours and, and the movie tours where they drive you around to the different locations of the sets and walking dead was huge. Um, you know, back that way. And I I'm guessing this was, oh, I don't even know this. It was 20, actually, no, it was 20, uh, 2016 is when it was um, still in the, and still in the height of walking dead, the height of walking dead. Yeah. We went over, we saw, you know, where we just saw a ton of stuff. And one of the cool things we learned as we were going through, um, all the different places for Walking Dead, all the different places for Hunger Games, is that Georgia was huge for filming. They were filming Baby Driver at the time, um, so all the cars and stuff were everywhere, which was really cool to see. Um, but the cool thing we learned is that like, if you ever see a show or a movie that it was probably filmed in Georgia, if you see that Georgia Peach at the end of the credits, uh -huh. they get a they get a big tax break if they put that peach in there. And um, so I never knew that. And then all of a sudden you start watching these shows and at the end of your favorite show, it's like, huh, there's the peach at the Always. end of a movie. Cause you know, with all these Marvel movies, now you have to wait till the end of the credits to see if there's anything for any movie now. Um, but <laughs> you see that Georgia peach and you're like, Oh, and then you start seeing that. And I'm sure the other States, you know, do stuff like that too. But oh yeah, um, the big tax amazing. incentive States are Georgia and then Vancouver and Toronto. That's why if you watch nice. anything, you'll always, you almost always see Georgia, Vancouver, or Toronto at the end of the credits. That's awesome. Well, I know we're going to jump into some hot makes soon, but is there anything you've worked on that you can talk about, like that people would know recently or in the past? I don't know what you can talk uh, about. So. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, I was just on an A24 movie. They, uh, I think, I don't know if the name will continue to be what it is, but it was originally called Earth Mama. Um, okay. I it's like a coming of age uh mother mother <laughs> sure. movie it's I, it looks like it's going to be one of those weird a24 movies um and I did all the pregnant bellies and stuff with uh Pandora effects here in in the bay area nice. um, but it should be weird like all those movies uh yeah and then uh I just got off another movie too but it's uh it's like a short story it's called freaky got tales it. I don't know how much freaky of that's tales. been been uh yeah. divulged yet so. so we can't we can't talk too much about that right hey, that's cool yeah but uh, other than that i've just been doing my own thing i make make props and costumes and whatnot and sell it to people on etsy <laughs> being sequestered for three months at a time on tv shows 
Um, but I that, wish. Which and is, man, which if is, they called me again, I'd be back in a heartbeat. That's how fun you would. You would was. do it again. Oh yeah. I, I mean, you've been there twice. It's like the maybe like the the biggest loser episode or no. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'll like, come bring back. back. Bring back three like, time loser. <laughs> Nah, we want to see you win. We want to see you win. Um, I know one of my aunts is a huge face-off, uh, huge face-off fan. She loves the show, and and I, uh, she saw my post on Facebook, and she said, "Wait, wait, you got you know." And I was like, "Yeah, just tune in." So if you're watching, hey, um, I don't want to, hey, you know, I don't want to, I want to <laughs> out you, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty cool. It, it's always fun when it's somebody you might recognize or bump into or or something like that. Um, and I love your stuff. I, I absolutely have some ideas. Uh, and I'm going to watch your Etsy store because I think it's so cool that you can like, hey, I think I want this that you're offering. Obviously, it has to be something you're offering, I'm assuming. And I then, do custom uh, commission work too. So like really, even I've really. done a bunch of stuff that I don't list where it's like, hey, I want to be the only person. Like right now I'm working on a Jar Jar Banks for somebody. <laughs> And uh, he doesn't want anybody else to have it, so it's just for him. He, you you pay extra for that, but right, right. I imagine um, you got to pay a little extra because it's you know it's not going to keep making you money, right? Exactly. Yeah. If if it's something that it's just for one person, one off, it, it makes no sense for me to do it at like an affordable price because right, I right, can't right. make any more money off of it. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. But that, yeah, I'm open hilarious. to commissions. So anybody who wants a custom mask or custom Good old Jar Jar prosthetic yeah. custom costume, I do that too. That's so cool. Well, um, can we get gym masks? Oh, my God. No. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. All right. We're going to do some hot makes. Uh, we, I know we're running a little bit behind, but we'll catch up uh, maybe during the hot makes. So um, hang out real quick. We're going to run a bumper. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the hot makes. All right, a quick shout out. We'll start with first. Uh, this was a shout out that uh, Caleb posted for Abby Math when she was on the show, uh, I think last week with David. Um, great episode, both for David and Abby, the teacher. I hope there are many more teachers like you out there, Abby. So I think we all feel like that. Thank you again for being on last week. Um, we definitely had to toss that out there. Um, next, we got local maker, Michigan. I'm only five Prusa meters away from a free spool. So jump on there. Um, this is, let's see, an E3D online smoky McBurnout buggy uh, for a printables contest, which is uh, printables.com is um, a site you can go find 3D prints at. And uh, let's see, it's protopasta spitting seeds gray. But I wanted to toss this out there because um, how this works, Walter, is people can tag their own stuff with hashtag hot makes or find other people's stuff which happens quite often or anything cool that they see that's a, a make out in the you know out in the wild there um and this particular one i wanted to um pump local maker michigan uh for one it was his birthday i believe it was his birthday a couple days ago so happy birthday happy um, birthday for, for two because we need to get you to your five prusa meters so you can you know get that free spool of filament so uh jump onto the printables and and get that done um but I also love the 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 uh, smoky McBurnout. It's like a little golf cart with a nos, you know, a canister in the back, and then the the, the it's supposed to be like the smoke from the tires burning out. I love that. That's cool. Um, what do we got? Oh, this one I posted recently. I don't know if you guys saw this. So the P1P is a, a bamboo lab printer that that just um, on Black Friday became available to pre-order, and I did a live stream and and I shot some custom panels out that I did uh, for my for my channel there. And I, I, you know, I wanted to make sure we got it out there to the masses. If you hadn't seen this yet, um, this thing is going to be a lot of fun to customize. I mean, this is just one example, but um, it's pretty cool. It starts out like just a black frame and then they're going to give you the template. Basically, you need to build whatever, you know, whatever you want. So that's going to be pretty cool. sweet. Um, <laughs> the Flintstones car. Yes, I love it. Uh, let's see. Honey Badger. I, I thought you'd like this one, Walter. Um, this is uh, from Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. This is uh, a Kratos Leviathan Axe printed on uh, the Bamboo Lab printer. Very cool. And uh, let's see. There's a little bit of... Uh, I know it's probably hard to see. Let's see if we can get a better... Oh, there was a, there was a 
pretty good shot. Now I want to do this because I know you're on a, there we go. I look so good. So, so, uh, kind of pretty awesome. Has all this stuff in the back. I see airbrush stuff and, (laughs) but this thing looks really good. Um, I, I paint with my fingers. I, I suck at art like that. So, um, (laughs) to see something like this, uh, it's just really cool. Um, do you do many like props like this? Oh yeah. Yeah. A bunch of different swords, machetes, knives, guns. Awesome. There's a, there's a quick, uh, video. Hopefully I'm muted. Yeah. Um, Your sound was off. (laughs) There you go, all painted and ready for action. I love it. Looks so good. So good. Um, well, congrats to that Honey Badger 3D print and paint. Love it. Love it. Not my skills. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Sitting at the edge of desk. Oh, boy. Um, local Maker Mission again. Michigan again with this. This is a 930% Lego minifig. Um. <laughs> So there you you go. (laughs) 930%. I love it. Love it. Um, And then I had to put in the next one because he said uh, 930% now with Mohawk and Flying V guitar. Nice. Um, So, I mean, you got to have the the Mohawk and the Flying V if you're going to have a 930% Lego minifig. Um, Look at it standing on the printer. Yeah, I, I see that. Yeah, it's standing on a looks like a Prusa Mini. Um, there you go. There's the there's the Prusa you Mini. Print that, like all the tiny, like individual pieces, one at a time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is true. Um, I have a feeling he printed on something different. But hey, if you print it on the Mini, that's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> I think I need this. I think I need this in my life. Uh, the the Mini Fig. With the gym hair, with the you know, you get you got to get the you know the yeah. gym hair and, and the flying V. I love that. Don't um, tempt me. <laughs> let's do it, <laughs> um, Liz. She's with us. I saw her chatting mo- a lot here, inspired by uh, the Edge of Tech's Festivus Star misread last week on Hot Makes. I've added added a Festivus poll to uh, to Principles dot com to air our grievances, show feats of strength, and discover miracles of the season. Um, so she had these, uh, basically these, these stars here and I don't know why I said Festivus, but there you go. I did. And now she added it. So you can put your, uh, I'm hoping Liz that you added it so you can actually put these on top, right? That would be awesome. Can you, can you put your stars on top of the Festivus poll? Please tell me you can. I don't see that in the pictures, but for, uh, for Festivus, do you leave cookies and water out? For <laughs> cookies and water? Yes, absolutely. There you go. Someone, uh, K2 Kevin, finally air my grievances in style. Uh, with a little Festivus poll printed there. Uh, so if you want Festivus for the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there we go. Yes challenge for next week yes make the it will be sweet if i could take the the stars that you made and put them like match them with the top um where it's like cut out in the star it'll like slot right in you know like a little puzzle piece that holds the star in yeah that's a challenge for next week liz but i love the festivus poll nice work love how somebody went out of their way to do something for you and you're like all right new challenge yeah <laughs> Yes. Well, she, if I remember right, she just started um, learning how to model stuff. So that's perfect. I, I think this is awesome. Um, it exceeds my modeling abilities already. So, <laughs> all right, what do we got next here? Um, oh, yeah, th- this one was awesome. So uh, for, for context, um, if I could have if you could have any or if I could have any superpower, I would be and then they, they tagged the person in this but check this out uh here you go stop motion nice yes stop motion and like motion it's just crazy (laughs) love stop motion 
the the amount of time that probably went into this scene is probably absurd. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, all the moving parts, all the different people in the background, all you know, everything. I mean, look at how often look at how often the shirt changes throughout the entire video. You know, it's probably like ten hours for ten seconds. <laughs> Days, you know. Yeah, it's so good, and this is sixteen seconds, and you got to imagine. You have to stop motion every character, anything in that whole scene that moves. Not only that, but the camera movements. It's you've got yeah. traditional like cinematography camera movements going along with this. Yeah, you're following it down. Yeah, that's so good, so good. Um, let's see what do we got. Two more, a couple more. Uh, another thing that I think Llama tagged us in. Um, I could watch this literally all day. This is a collection of slow motion videos, objects falling into water and uh, and water and corn flour results in spectacular fluid motion. I lit, I'm not going to play two minutes of this, but I could watch it all day because just the different way things react is awesome. I mean, that's a jellyfish to me upside down. (laughs) Um, the next one, it's definitely the only fish. This one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. <laughs> wow. Oh, wait. Oh, man. But, uh, was that one of the totals from Inception? It looks <laughs> altered. It does. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. It's so good. Oh, an egg. I love it. Like you said, it doesn't look real. It, doesn't. Uh, it definitely looks, you know, definitely looks fake. So grab your cell phone, which most of them can do slow mo now, and do some slow mo stuff, people. <laughs> so it's like a like a CG computer, like liquid simulation. Yeah. Now that's cool. Super cool. I wish I had that camera. You know, honestly, like most of our cell phones can do um, slow motion now. All right, we got to see one more here. Legos. Yeah, this one's cool. Last but not least. Yeah, I don't want to watch the two minutes of this two minutes later. (laughs) Yes, I was fast forwarding. That's so good. Pretty cool. I love it. I love it. There's things we get to see on this show. I I love that. Um, because you know, a lot of times I wouldn't see this stuff anyway. I'm, I don't have time to look at everything. And I love that you guys tag us and stuff like that. Thank you, thank you, Llama. Um, I wouldn't want to be the guy cleaning up that last one, not at all. All right, last but not least, Chris Travis, and well, bam. <laughs> this is uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, there there's a uh this is well he tagged everybody i don't see it did he say what it was yeah i'm Random trying to post. find that i'm guessing it was an earlier post i don't oh, know yeah. maybe um cap tubes firefly blue pla polymaker uh polylight sparkle dark green three minutes in a uv light oh so good it, it glows just awesome the effects you can get from 3D printing, huh? <laughs> nice work, Chris. Um, you could use this in eyes, couldn't you? Like something similar. Where they, do you guys use UV in in modeling a lot? I'm say I should say UV reactive paint, like stuff that would glow. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, in painting for sure. Body nice. painting, big time. <laughs> sign me up um <laughs> no no <laughs> not for no, mine god. <laughs> yeah. no god please no <laughs> no yeah nobody wants that either i love it i love it all right real quick a uh, couple quick things um next week <laughs> we'll announce a guest soon probably um also don't forget to go check out abby math right after this over on loyal moses show and uh, December 12th, we have Anna from the Little House of Lights. She'll be joining us um, probably alongside of Lindsay, my wife. Um, if you watched my video from yesterday about the SVO, uh, yeah, the Soval SVO6, 
that I <laughs> really started some stuff with, with the title and the thumbnail, um, you'll know uh, that Anna from Little House of Lights at the end of the video, spoiler alert, uh, I'm gonna, I actually sent her that printer because I think it's so good. So if you haven't watched it yet, spoiler alert, if you have, well, thanks for <laughs> putting up with it. Um, but she'll be on on the 12th. I cannot wait to talk to her. She's, do, she's doing some really cool stuff with miniatures. We have some of her stuff. Um, my, my wife um, ordered some stuff from her and it is ridiculous. Uh, the stuff she's doing with resin and miniatures, which is really cool. Uh, resin printing and miniatures. But um, before we go, Walter, one more time, who are you? Um, kind of what you do. And, and most of all, where can we find you if we want to come buy some stuff or anything? Yes, please. My name is Walter Welsh on Instagram. I am Waltimus Prime. Definitely come check me out. Follow me. Uh, I make a lot of cool stuff on there from 3D printing to costuming to hand sculptures, mold making, all kinds of stuff. So Check me out, Waltimus Prime on Instagram, and I'm Welsh Creations on Etsy if you want to purchase any latex masks or reach out to me for some kind of a custom commission. And all the all of his links are in the uh, description, too. Perfect. Right Find those links, check it out, and if you want uh, one of his masks or something custom, maybe, hit him up. Uh, maybe you guys can work something out. Uh, Chris Travis, yeah, complete clickbait. Okay, it was clickbait, but it was true clickbait. I didn't lie. No lying at all in the video. So I didn't like say, my God, we're going to blow up. And we never blew up. So there's that. <laughs> Anyways, everybody have a great night. Thank you for being here once again. Walter, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, Geary and I you know, had a blast. I learned a lot. And I can't wait to go. F I'm going to go back and watch the seasons now uh, of Face Off because... 13 you know, is way better. Just just skip 10 and just watch 13. Skip 10 and go straight <laughs> to 13. I like it. Well, stick with us. We'll be right back with you. Everybody else, have a great night. Uh, go check out Abby on Loyal Moses show if you want to. I believe that's on Twitch. And uh, otherwise, we'll see a, a link to her tweet in the comments, too. Perfect. The, the tweet is in the comments. Um, and everybody else, we'll see you next week right here on Hot Makes. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. See ya. Was it really quick bait? I mean, really? Maybe. Maybe it was. I don't know. What do you want?